from Fort Wayne, Indiana. This is the PBA 60 Dick Weber Championship presented by DeHaze Insurance Group and 900 Global. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Phil Brilo with me. Again. Once again for the last event of the year, Tom Carter. And Tom, you had a nice run here in the tournament. You have a lot of experience <laughs> on this Dick Weber pattern. You had a 300 game in the fresh. What are these guys going to do on the fresh today? Well, I think they're going to stay right, and they're going to you know, try to keep the ball obviously in play, but they're going to play the lanes really pretty tight. You know, our first match is two guys we just watched last week, Brian Voss and Jerry Secor, and Brian going for back-to-back wins, hopefully here. Yeah, rest of our stepladder finals, Amelia Mora Sr. His, this is his first time on the show, which is absolutely amazing. And he's the oldest guy on the show, too. He's 69 years old. And after that, we got Rick Manier, who won the 2007 Senior U.S. Open, and our tournament leader, Hall of Famer, Mark Williams. So Williams dominated this event after the opening round of qualifying, came back to lead after round two, and just kept running. And Sakura knows what he's in for. He saw Voss strike early and often in that position round match to his right. Voss leapfrogged both Ron Moore and Daryl Bauer, previous champions of this event, each before Voss ended up finishing in the number five spot. Kind of funny that uh, Brian Voss last week qualified with his first round. He was in 51st, and he goes on to win the tournament this week. First round, he's in 51st, and now he's on the show. Yep. Number five seed coming in. There you see the roll-up for Voss and the strike. Beautiful shot. Well, he's using a real, what we call a big ball, pinned down, asymmetrical ball, and he's keeping the ball really tight because if you get the ball out, at least on the fresh, if you got it out a little early, it just hung. It just never did make the turn. But then you couldn't actually start it up too much because then it went through the face. But then you couldn't move left because then the ball wouldn't recover. So the shot favored the guys that could really keep the ball fairly tight. Like I said, when I shot 300 uh, yesterday, it was um, on the fresh, and I had a great shot just going up the lane, but obviously lanes change afterwards. I had 279 after that, and then we went to the next pair, and I was in another state. <laughs> <laughs> lanes changed. Boss, second frame. And, and You know, almost every week we see the same thing. If you can get it down to 7-8 down there at the break point, that seems to be the, the go-to boards on most of these patterns. you got to get it to that break point, then the ball rolls up. But it's the way you get it to the break point on this pattern that makes the difference. So Sakura looking to match. And as you said, scores seem to be kind of higher on the fresh. And then they kind of scrambled a little bit as the day well, went on. It, it, exactly. Like I said, you know, I went 300, 279. Then it was 190, 190, 20, 190, 220, 222. I mean, it was just, it was so touchy. It, it wasn't a problem getting to the pocket. That was a great shot there by Jerry. Uh, it wasn't a problem getting to the pocket. After the the pattern blended out a little bit, maybe a little bit of carry down, getting the corners out, and you could hit the pocket and leave solid eights, nines, four pins, ten pins. That was the hard part is getting the right roll to go get the ball to go through the pins. Jerry on his second show, he was on the show last week, uh, and that was his first show, so he's got two shows in his first year out. That's not doing too bad. Not too bad at all. Third place in Jackson back on Monday. And these guys, along with you and along with me, just, you know, talking about it, they got to be tired at this point in time of the stretch. I am shot. My, uh, I hate to say it, but my, my left leg, the one I had replaced here, actually on 9-11 a year ago, it would be almost a year ago, uh, it's tired. Uh, I'm tired. <laughs> so nothing but strikes so far for these gentlemen. Voss going to be stepping up in the third frame. Well, they're both playing the same shot just on opposite sides of the lane just really keeping the ball down and in you know the only player you're going to see do something probably totally different and at the at the lanes break down and that's going to be mark williams he had a different shot than anybody else did for the most part of the tournament he had that slow rolling big hook thing that he can do and get the ball to back to the pocket and carry Foss nine and three in match play including that big win in the position round game to get into this championship match, and there you see the expanse of this 56-lane bowling center here in Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne's largest family fun time center. Great food, great bowling, great family fun. All roads lead. 
to PBW. Well, one of Dave Small's place. I don't know how many he's got, but I'm thinking he's going to get in. the. If he keeps going, he'll be in the teens. I know that. <laughs> So the high game for the week for Voss was thrown during qualifying, 258 in game three. He actually had a 266 game three of last night's match play round. Boy, last night's match play. We After we qualified yesterday, we came back, and there was no re-oil. Yeah. And, oh, my Lord, you talk about the lane's hook in certain spots. Uh, Chris Keene made a huge run. Uh, yesterday he won five out of six matches shooting basically 240s and 250s every match and jumped clear up to third. I mean, he was, I think he qualified maybe 12th or 13th, but he just pole vaulted around and because that was kind of in his wheelhouse too, kind of like Mark Williams where he could get in and just kind of boom the ball. Well, it was a little different attitude with match play this week because of the scoring pace, so much higher in Jackson on the Chris Paul pattern, much more tame this week here on this Dick Weber pattern. <clears throat> Well, you know, we were on 45 feet, and a lot of people get scared of 45 feet, but we only had 21 mils of oil. So it wasn't like we had a lot of oil on the lane, but it's where the oil is on the lane that made this pattern really kind of tricky because it was really all in the mid lane. I mean, it, you're going to see a couple of guys, Emilio when he comes up and Rick Manier when they bowl, they have the ability to kind of put the ball, kind of shove it right into the oil line, and the ball almost backs up to the pocket, I mean, and it's it's amazing. So Sakura, everybody was given the thing of one hit wonder last week. They couldn't be any more wrong. They oh, the lefty said it easy last week. Well, he was the high lefty by far this week. Sakura showing all the doubters they're wrong. Well, a little doubt on that shot. Well, but he got the elbow out on that and kind of went around it. Yep. Jerry, a past Team USA member in '97. Other than that, I asked him what he, he did. For 25 years, he was an engineer on the railroad. He played with big trains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a little stick at the foul line, a little pop-up, but no problem covering the spare for Sakura. Sakura is high game this week, 268 during game five of round two qualifying. And Sakura, you look at the scorecard, he didn't have too many blemishes on there. Low game of the week, only 172. And only five games of the 26 under 200. Not easy to do this week on the Dick Weber pattern. No. The, it, said it was easy. It was really easy to shoot 190 because you could hit the pocket a lot, but just getting doubles. And, and if you found a pair that you could strike on, you better strike a lot. And we've that, seen that looked like 12 out to 8, and that's the place <laughs> he played all week. Voss looking just like he did in the beginning of that championship match in the step ladder in Jackson on Monday. That's a way to bookend your week, possibly. Well, yeah, you know, if he could go back to back wins, I mean, that's a pretty nice little year. Just come out for two, you know, <laughs> well, he hasn't bowled very many tournaments. No. Definitely these last two and make both the shows. Guys were using a little bit of surface on the ball just. To keep it rolling, and the, you really needed the ball to roll heavy in this. You didn't need anything that was flippy because flippy didn't work for most part for most people. But I think everybody else on the show is throwing pinup equipment. Rolling in, and not going to happen with the 10 pin. Apparently, Voss's ball decided to scramble <laughs> <laughs> or signal on the way down the lane. Well, and. and that was a, a, a very typical hit where you hit the pocket and you're pulling the rip cord because you're thinking it's going to strike, and the tin pin just stands there. It isn't uh, that you threw a bad shot. It's just it's just the way this pattern plays, and the oil changes fairly quickly. No problem on the cover for Voss. One of the guys that has the ability to actually control his wrist and almost back up the ball. So he never carries a spare ball. He can use his strike ball as a spare ball, which allows you one more you know, big ball in the bag. You know, you otherwise guys, if they have six or nine balls, one of them is at least a plastic ball. Yeah, I've gone back to doing that same thing. I was the plastic ball advocate for years. Now I've gone back to just using my strike ball and just flattening. Things. Well, I don't have much of a hand anyway, but you know. <laughs> but yeah, I've just flattened it out and you know, use the oil in the middle to help 
push the ball across the lane, and then it holds on. Right. Speaking of holding on, oh. Ooh. I didn't think that was going to make it. kind of looked like he flew his elbow on that one also. <laughs> uh, you see, Chris, Chris, you're not going to get sportsmanship winner award winner, winner, again this year if you're laughing at a shot like that. Come on, Chris. <laughs> that vote's right around the corner again. Last two winners, you and Chris Kane. Who's, who's going to be next? I wonder. It uh, wouldn't surprise me if Chris wins again. Okay. Chris already a two-time winner of that award. He's just trying to get it renamed for him. So <laughs> I don't yeah. think they're ever going to rename it for. Uh, no, I think it's Dick always going to be the Dick Weber yeah. Sportsmanship Award. Yeah, the year that I won it, it was totally unexpected and very nice to win that. And Scar once again, the elbow, it seems yeah, to be a little he, problematic. Yeah, he looks like n not near as fluid as he did last week on the show. Last week, his arm was just long straight through the shot, and it looks like he's trying to help it, probably because obviously he wants to win, but <clears throat> he's more placing the ball than rolling the ball. It's a cross lane at the 6'10", no problem covering it up, but he's going to leave himself down by 11 pins. With Voss stepping up in the seventh frame. Now, this pattern, only three feet different in length from last week. Volume was a little bit different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, some people would think, at yeah, three feet, you really have to change your equipment that much. Yeah, you kind of have to out here on the PB1560 Tour when that happens. Well, <laughs> changing equipment is kind of a an understatement. A lot of the guys have, I mean, so many balls. I bet it just about everybody out here between the car and what's in their paddock. Everybody's carrying 20 bowling balls plus. And the pattern dictates, you know, the, the ball you want. You might have your favorite ball, but it might not ever match up on the lane. And layouts are huge. You know, we always say that, you know, ball surface to lane surface, that's 70% of the game right there. If those two match up, you strike a lot because the ball's rolling through the pocket. But if your ball surface doesn't match the lane surface, as far as what you're using on it, as far as 500, 2,000, whatever, uh, it's tough. The ball I shot 300 with basically had matched up the whole swing. <laughs> Surprise. And, and out of a fluke in practice with a couple shots left, I pulled that. I said, I'll try this thing because everything else, just I'm hitting the pocket but not working. And I shoot 300 with it. You never know. Wow, and speaking of you never know, that is a match influencer right there. That isn't, I think Charlie Tapp told me he had 11 710s uh, in this tournament. It, it was, again, a shot looks like it's going to be pretty good, and the ball just doesn't go through the pocket. And again, 45 feet oil, it's the mid lanes that the ball is not reading the right way. Trying to bounce it. Gets oh. a tickle. He bounced one out earlier, uh, and the pin rolled across, but just missed the seven. So that's 187 in the eighth for Voss, max of 247. Sakura can go 258. 258. Throw, now, talk about bowling balls from one tournament to another. Jerry is throwing. The same ball he threw on the show last week. Well, we've seen players do that all year long. Walter Ray, Walter Ray won with the same ball. The first three tournaments used the same ball to win the first three tournaments. The same exact one for two, and then one with a similar drilling and a little different surface for the third one in Mooresville, if right. I remember correctly. So, And that's the one thing that's very valuable for those players that are new to the game that are watching us on Full Bowling today. Surface changes are a huge influence on how your ball reacts. Well, it's it's the big thing anymore. Just because whatever it says on the shelf, on the placard, you're reading it says a thousand, five, fifteen hundred, two thousand, doesn't mean that that surface can't be changed. So many people sometimes buy a ball, and they throw it, and they go, "Oh, this doesn't, you know, it's not working." Well, change the surface. Either make it, you know, more or less or whatever, you know. But change the surface to see if it changes the roll, which it will change the roll, but if it changes your carry. Ninth frame, Sakura looking to get the foundation frame strike, and uh, Voss gave him a gift, and he gave the gift back. He, like I said earlier, he just doesn't seem quite as fluid going through the shot 
as he did last week. So the open frame from Sakura, and now Voss can just make this a non-issue with a double here in the ninth and tenth. Yeah, best Jerry can do right now is 226. Voss, if he can just strike spare the rest of the way out, he can shoot 227. Looks like he added a little bit more juice to that one for his speed. <laughs> Tighten the line and yeah. fire it a little harder. Yeah, it just keep the line because the, the straighter you could play it this week, the better off you were. But if you got slow and you felt like you had to give it away, that was bad juju. <laughs> yeah, 11 pins now the lead for Voss. First strike here in the 10th. Pretty much sealed the deal for him. And actually, nine spare strike will seal the deal as his max that way is 227. Right. 226 the maximum for Jerry Sakura with a punch out in the 10th. Well, the strike here definitely seals the deal. Boy. Voss, you watch this, put his hand in there. He's got both fingers spread. Keeps his hand up the back of the ball, more end over end roll. So the ball doesn't <laughs> change directions, and he got the break, that little slap. Of the 10 to get it out. How did that six pin get out of there with the 10? That would, that, the six pin went sideways, it looked like. Yeah, it kind of like slid and then fell into the 10. <laughs> That's all he needed, though. Yes, indeed. And Brian Voss going to move on to Emilio Mora Sr. in his first it, national event step ladder. It, first time on the show. And Emilio Bold, absolutely fantastic. And you're going to see a completely different style of bowling in this next match as far as ball roll and angle to the pocket. Uh, everybody's got their own game out here. Yep. So we're going to fast forward through the rest of this match, and we'll be back momentarily to wrap up our first match here between Voss and Sakura and match two coming up next. So with Amelia Morris Sr. practicing, we've got ourselves through our first match, 246 to 226 Voss over Sakura. Phil Bryla, Tom Carter here once again. And the key there for Voss, we saw in the championship match in Jackson, bouncing back off of a bad shot. Yes, the 7-10 was a bad break, not necessarily a bad shot. Right. But Voss responded and ended up well, winning that match. Well, he ended up picking up his speed and just keeping the ball more online. And if Jerry, he struck out in the 10th, and if he'd have thrown it as effortlessly, as he did in the 10th the rest of the match, he had been great because his swing was like it was last week, just nice and fluid and through it. But I think, you know, you're wanting that first title, and you just kind of let the your, your gut get wound up a little bit, and that's I think that's what happened to him. Well, let's move on. You mentioned first title. How about first step letter appearance ever, this guy up on the approach practicing right now, Emilio Morris Sr. What do you do to battle the nerves if you're, if you're Emilio? You know, Emilio's been out here long enough, and he's bowled against all the guys. and for the whole time I've been out here, I, I came out, I think it's 12 years ago, and he's been out here ever since. Uh, Emilio never looks like he gets very excited. He's just a cool, calm, collected type bowler. Uh, he's a very straight bowler, kind of down. He's actually down and at him, not giving the ball away. So I don't think the lanes are going to come into so much play for him. This pattern is kind of playing right into his hand. There's enough volume in the middle that 
His ball can ride that shim, and there's just enough friction that makes it turn over. So we'll let Mora take his last couple of practice shots here, and we'll be back with that match between Morrissey here and Voss momentarily. And the announcements are made, and the start has been declared by PBA 50 tour director John Weber. Always good to have John steering the ship during these step ladders. And, of course, his right-hand person during Wonder. these step players, your wife, Linda Carter. <laughs> Wonder Woman. <laughs> Linda getting things done all week long. And, once again, thanks to John and Linda for all their help that they give us here in the Flow Zone booth during the entire events. They give us the scores. They give us extra information. You're going to miss those guys when they're gone after we get out of here today. John's always running from. around like chicken with his head off. He's always just like <laughs> bouncing. He's always nervous. He's so worried that nothing is going to go right, and it always, always seems to go right. Oh, the lanes might have changed just a hair, or he got a little hair slow compared to that ninth and tenth that he had. I, I go with your second opinion on that, but what you know, just looking at it, it just looked like it revved up that little bit sooner. And, of I, course, if the ball slows down, then. I, I, well, he didn't take any practice shots over on the other lanes, so that first shot uh, might have been a little slow. It, it happens run. on the senior tour. If you give <laughs> us a break, we slow down. Yeah, Voss, definitely. He kept throwing on lane 40, which he's allowed to between games to stay loose. He's just not allowed to bowl the, any practice on this championship pair. And that one comes back a little too firm and eight out in frame one. Yeah, they could be changing just enough. So what happens now is the guy that's got his rev rate, he's going to have to pick up his speed because if he moves in too much into that shim and that puddle, is he's going to hit the pocket a lot but I don't know how much he's going to strike. And you, you watch Emilio here, he, another guy throwing a, a big ball, pin-up layout. But Emilio doesn't have a lot of hand. He's always just been a down-in player. And he he's going to just throw it down the lane and let the lane kind of take the ball, revs up on the back end, just sets to the hole. And that's the thing. Most people would think, okay, longer patterns, not in the wheelhouse of a lot of players for it. For for the straight, straight shot. for the straight guys, but that's where it's a misconception because you got Emilio, a straight player. Rick's coming up in the next match. He's a straighter player. Uh, not that Rick can't hook the ball. Emilio has never been known to really hook the ball, so he's always been accurate. You know, and I, there's something to be said for accuracy. If you can repeat shots, I don't care what the length of the pattern is, you can get to the pocket. You got to be able to repeat it. Sometimes when these guys with this high rev rate and they think they can just kind of overhook the, the pattern and they can out-muscle the pattern, they get in trouble where a guy like Emilio doesn't ever think that way to begin with. He just plays the shot and finds the angle to the pocket, and his moves are going to be very small. He's, he's not making big moves like the hook guys make. He might move a couple boards one way or another. On the spare... Emilio being a great spare shooter, obviously the straighter guys are tend to be spare, better spare shooters just for the fact that they don't need a lot of boards to cross. You know, when you're going at a spare, straighter's greater. Walter Ray proves that every week. Oh, you mean you don't want to take that scenic route towards the seven pin every time it's out there? Hook well, the whole lane? I did this week because <laughs> there was so much oil it was easy to do. I, I don't recommend it, but when there's a pattern like this, you could use a big ball and literally hit the devil out of it and it to finally get across the puddle to the four and the seven. There's Voss. He's Much bad. better shot, a little bit better ball speed. I think the most impressive stat for Voss these last two events is comes back from day one adversity and just starts running over everybody. Well, you take a <laughs> Hall of Fame player, and the reason they're Hall of Fame players, just because they have a, maybe a questionable day the first day, they are so good at the game. They see something different than other players. They make that adjustment, which doesn't look like much to the naked eye, and they still start ramboing them. I mean, how many times I've seen Parker Bone do it? You know, yep. eyes only maybe 40, 50 over the first day, 400 over the next day. Well, <laughs> what happened? Yeah, Voss was 51st after day one here in Fort Wayne. Got his way into the top five after seven additional games of qualifying and 12 games of match play. Well, that match play, getting the 30 bonus pins, that makes a huge difference. You know, there's, those 30 pins make a, 
a big deficit. Well, and he was 9-3 and three in match play. The only guy in the field better in match play than Voss is this man right here, Emilio Moore, 11-1. and one. Only lost one match. I know when I bowled him, uh, my w- measly 180 didn't do anything to his, <laughs> his 230. Samora. Looking to get another strike on this right lane. Look at that ball. It doesn't even look like it's going to get to the pocket, but he just has just enough reps. The ball never overreacts. Well, yeah, watch. It's it, kind of like the it, Ron Moore it, hook set it, reaction like, there. Yeah, it hooked, it stopped, and it just kept going right through the pins. And that's about as much excitement as you're going to see out of Emilio. I mean, he's a good player. I mean, at one time, Emilio held the record in Ohio in the all events category for 10 years. He averaged 252. Oh, so uh, that means he can knock down some pins. No doubt about it. Amelia's high game of the week. He started with it. 256 in game one of qualifying round two. And just a lot of consistency. And once again, all those match play wins. You know, he piled on 60 more pins than Brian Voss did. Piled on 120 more pins. Uh, than Jerry Sikora did, and that's what got him into the step ladder. Ball looks same, just wasn't as high in the pocket, but if you watch Emilio, not much of a knee bend. Uh, he's got a, a long slide, but not much of a knee bend, so he does a lot of his throwing with his upper body. It's going to push quite nicely. Uh, that Actually, 10 pins were easy Uh this week because of the oil in the middle you just had to get your feet in the right spot and the ball fell back to the 10 pin it it wasn't uh, too difficult not like it is on some of the short patterns where you've got to kind of fire it across the lane to make sure you get there so Voss a couple of PB850 tour titles to his credit he's looking to tie Ron Moore at 2 for the most PBA 60 titles. And oh. three in a row for Voss. Obviously, Voss is really wired to win <laughs> back to back. The last what? week he was on top of the step ladder. He only yeah. had to bowl the one match against Harry so, Sullivan so to take home the title. Here we go. We're pretty much sure that because he made all the shows, and this is the only show that Ron Moore hasn't made, he had six in a row, right? Yeah. He's going to be PBA player 60. Of the of this year? No, because it accumulates all the points during the regular fifty events oh, as well. Cause, so there's because no if he bottom. wins this, right, back to back, if hmm. if Voss had a couple more tournaments under his belt, they may have had a chance. But unfortunately for Voss, Moore had that wrapped up. I mean, Moore bowls everything, and Ron Moore just missed the. He show He just here. missed the show again. He was sixth, forty-seven pins outside the show. He had a game in the one seventies that cost him in position round. <laughs> Voss getting a little animated, but we've seen that last week. You know, he starts piling on strikes. He starts fist pumping. I keep thinking he's going to smack the floor sometimes, and if he does that, it, <laughs> <laughs> it, might, it might fight back. Yeah, it might change the, his whole game. Samora. Voss starts out with a split the next four. Emilio, just filling frames at this point, needs to start striking it up. And wow, the magic that, wave of the fingers, and they all go down. Yeah, a little half pocket there, and he threw enough pins over there that it ju- that was outside. That was like six down lane. I wouldn't even call that half pocket. How about third pocket? <laughs> Splashes everything around, makes it happen, keeps himself That's what's so within 18. Misunderstanding about this game, it mind boggles me. The fact that you can hit the pocket a thousand different ways and strike, and you can also hit it a thousand different ways and not strike. You know, it just it, it, it just doesn't seem to be every center, every oil pattern, everything just plays different from day to day. Are there centers where you've adjusted where you've hit in the pocket because you know the carry is going to be different? Yes. I mean, I if when, if half pocket is carrying and flush isn't um i'm going to adjust to see if i can hit half pocket you know Uh, the idea is to knock down pins in this game it's not how it's how many and you know and besides those half pocket hits might get in your opponent's head (laughs) (laughs) 
Lamora keeping clean. He was cleaning his position on Matt. Shot 191 clean against Ron Moore to hold on to the number three position coming in the step ladder. Problem is, when you're bowling a guy like Brian Voss, staying clean is just not going to cut it. No, because Voss has figured out a way to strike. And, you know, Voss, obviously in shape, he has the ability to throw it hard. Um, Emilio, 69 years old, doesn't throw it that hard. And when this pattern kind of burns up in the front part of the lane, that extra speed that Brian can generate is going to make a big difference on pin carry. You know, we mentioned a lot of players. We mentioned about how tired they have to be with these back-to-back PBA 60 events. A lot of you guys are gluttons for punishment. You guys are going to Bowling Green, Ohio, for a regional that starts tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Gets four the... nine and could get. Oh, oh. He, got the, he got the love tap, but wasn't wasn't fast enough. Well, a lot of the guys are. Yeah. Th- this little fat guy is going, <laughs> is going home and giving his knee a rest. And uh, you see the extra look there. He he thought it was going down. I, it, it's time I, I need to let it heal. Hopefully next year will be more gooder. <laughs> it's always good when it's more gooder. Yes. Is it better when it's more gooder or good when it's more gooder? <laughs> Both. Both. Well, Voss definitely in a good position here <laughs> in this match. Uh, Brian's kind of in, in cruise mode right now. He yeah. just he knows he's got a shot. Emilio's got to figure out a way to start striking. So both players working on spares, so 17 pins the advantage for Voss. And you see a little self-talk there. What he's got to do, he's probably telling himself what he needs to do on this next shot. Uh, self-talk is huge. Uh, and if you're just starting this game or you're a young person coming up in the ranks of this game, you know, positive self-talk is about what you're going to do is huge. The things that you don't want to say is, oh, I never make this spare. I always miss this. I hope it strikes. You, you can't think that way. you got to have definite positive attitude. Yeah, you got to keep uh, keep the wiring in the right place. It's, well, it's amazing it, how all of a sudden your muscles react to the how you, your wiring in your brain is going. Uh, definitely. I mean, if you've got a beaten attitude, you're going to throw the ball like you've already lost. More. He's got three strikes on this lane. Probably number four here. No, no. Oh. Now, we just talked about, you know, half pocket hits, third pocket hits. It almost looked like he tried to do the same thing. He's a little bit farther out than the last one and barely hit the head pin. It has been a long time since Mora has seen the winner's circle in the PBA event 2003 in a senior regional in Bay City, Michigan for his loan regional title. And this is a man that has bowled a lot of events. Well, it, unfortunately, you know, accuracy is one thing, but you still need a rev rate sometimes to get through the ball to drive through the pocket. And uh, Emil is such a kind of a soft-handed down-in guy. Unless there's screaming back ends, sometimes his ball, he hits the pocket a lot, but carries a big thing. Emilio did have one prior step ladder final, but it was in a doubles event back in the 2013 PBA Senior Super Senior Classic. He was partnered with Pete Weber, and they ended up finishing third in that event. And I think the gas has just uh, run out for Emilio. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of games, that, you know. Well, you had 30 in, 30 in Jackson Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Travel right. here Tuesday. Practice session Wednesday morning. Right. Bowl at so Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah, yep. you guys have been. Uh, then start the next day at, at 11. Yep. Bowl another seven games. Then literally 50 minutes later, we start match play. Then come up this morning. So we finished at 930 at night. And then come right back at 830 and start bowling again. Yes, indeed. Anybody, any of your friends say that bowling's not a sport? Yeah, I haven't bowled the same number of games these guys have done here at 60 and older, the PBA 60 event over three days, and see if they still feel about bowlers not being athletes. Well, between Jackson and here is an easy 70 games in, the, in a week's period <laughs> of time. You know, you're almost bowled a whole league season. 
Yeah. Well, if you count, and if you, most of the guys bowled the 50 event too, so if you count that, you're at almost 100 games between the PBA 50 event in Jackson, the 60 event in Jackson, Rip. and the Dick Weber Championship here in Voss jumps all over that open frame. For more, I take an extra look, and he throws so many shots where it's just no doubt it's 10 back. Well, you know, we just talked about it earlier how he's going to keep it online, and, and that ball isn't making a big move to the pocket. It's just kind of rolling up to the pocket. It's not like it's duck hooking and just blasting through the going from right to left. Uh, that pattern, this pattern doesn't require that. Yep. Any mark here in this match, pretty much done as Voss's max right now is at 257. Rick Muneer waiting there in the wings. Our next match, the 2007 Senior uh, Open winner. And there is your winner by keeping the ball in the lane in the 10th frame, Brian Voss. And that's assuming that Moore can get four in a row. More, <laughs> more yet to get a double this game. Well, there's no doubt that Emilio is going to be back at it again. I mean, he's, he's a competitor. He bowls a lot. He, he's probably headed to Bowling Green. If not, he's headed back home to uh, probably start up league. A lot of leagues. Actually, our league at Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl starts this Sunday. It's a 48 by 5. It's an all-men's league that starts this Sunday at 10, 15 in the morning. Uh, per, I, per service immediately after or before? <laughs> for some of us before. <laughs> I might be getting a sub. <laughs> Wow, 240 bowlers under the roof at 10, 15 a.m. on a Sunday. That's you, impressive. You know what's amazing? We run a 50-50 pot every Sunday, mm-hmm. and your half of the 50-50 pot, your half you get yep. to take home, is 1,100 or better every week. Wow. Well, way to keep it under 12 because then that's a 1099. Don't want that. <laughs> yeah, keep it at 1199. Last thing I need is a 1099. IRS already knows what I make enough at the times. They probably don't know what I'm making here this week, though. Thousands. Oh. oh. Well, Didn't matter at that point. Yeah, Emilio knew that it was all over after Brian had thrown that three-bagger in the seventh, eighth, and ninth. Yep. So let's see if Voss tries another piece of equipment or if he sticks with that same ball here in the tenth. I mean, it's, it's wide He's open. He's been throwing that ball all day. Yep. <laughs> so I'm assuming, shouldn't assume anything, but I'm assuming he's going to keep throwing that because he's just going to tweak the pattern as much as as he can, because he, when you got a ball that's rolling that good, you uh, you stick with it. But that's, I mean, just from our angle here, it still looks like there's a lot of surface on that ball, doesn't there? It does, yeah. So, and, and surface makes that ball slow down. It takes that snap out of the back. So, you know, he, he's obviously, if he if it has as much surface on it as it looks like, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing, just rolling to the pocket. Well, if Voss finishes his last two shots off, and Tom and I will be back momentarily, we'll talk about what lays in the road ahead of Voss still to try to take down this PBA 60 Dick Weber Championship from Pro Bowl West in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So as Rick Manier and Mark Williams start practicing for their respective matches coming up, Brian Voss, another 246 game, ho-hum. What's it going to take to stop him other than 247? 247. <laughs> he took the worst run. I don't know. I have nothing to say now. <laughs> oh, there's got to be something to say. Well, here's something you can think about then. You're going to say there's going to be 14 shots thrown right now between these two players, seven on each lane most likely. 
Uh, Voss gets zero practice. How's that going to affect Brian Voss when he tries to come back and line up? Well, off? depending on the equipment they're using, and it looks like that Mark's using a big ball too, and it could dry up the pattern a little bit. So his speed's going to come into play, or he's going to back his hand off out of it so that he keeps that line. I, I can't see him doing what Mark's going to do. Mark, you know, Mark has the ability to hook the whole lane, but as he's practicing, he's playing right where Voss has been playing. So is that a technique to try to tear up his line and so that he can move in and do what he, he does best? I don't know, yeah. Let's take a look at one of Mark Williams' shots here and one coming up. And it, as you said, we've seen Voss kind of migrate just so slightly to the left. Uh, he hasn't done a ton of it to this point. And yesterday and the day before, Mark was crossing like fifth arrow, but only taking it to 12 down lane, just keeping it tight, and his carry was unbelievable. But right now, he's practicing, you know, way to the right. Rick Manier's doing the same thing Emilio did, but he's got more ball speed. Let's take so, a look at Williams. There it is. Nice and deep. And Yeah, so he's crossing like 15 right now, so it'll be interesting to see if – he, he migrates into 20 and starts looping it a little bit. He's got such a soft touch uh, for a big guy with that, the way he gets the ball to actually shape up. So we're going to let these guys finish their practice, and we'll be back with that semifinal match, Manier and Voss from the PBA 60 Dick Weber Championship. Well, Brian Voss is told by Rick Manier, hey, you're starting this match. I'm the higher seed, therefore... I want you to start. It's not like Voss has had a bad lane. <laughs> no, I, he, he's got a good look. The only thing that, you know, like the last time he started, last match, uh, was a little slow on the first shot, split. So he should be uh, obviously taking that into account, amp it up a little bit, because with all their shots, they had to change the pattern a little bit. Voss, 246 to 226 over Jerry Sakura in the opening match. And 246 to 169 over Emilio Mora Sr. in the second match. That's going to leave a mark. Yeah, that's what you want to do. Blast the pocket and leave a solid eight and go, thanks. Well, it hasn't left the mark yet. Actually, he has to make the spare to. Well, I don't think that. Sorry. Uh, Should have been clear on that. I'm getting picked on over here. (laughs) Need a little help. (laughs) Yeah, that's just one of those hits where there's. The dynamics of physics get a little weird in bowling. It doesn't make any sense. You know, I'm surprised he, he just shot that straight, but he could have used his strike. Actually kind of played off a little bit of his strike line sure. and still picked that up to see if there was something a little bit more inside, made a maybe a two-in-one move because since there's no pins in front of the eight pin, you, you should be, still have been able to use your strike line and pick that up. Well, Manier made match play, finished 22nd in the Jack 60 National Championship over this last weekend. And as an amateur, Minier took down the Senior U.S. Open in 2007. I remember that. I was there. And Rick playing the lanes a lot like Emilio. Down around 8-9. But he's a little more at him. He's like 8-9 down lane, too. And he's going pretty much at the pocket with a little bit more speed and loft. Ball can't hook in the air, so he's keeping it online. Manier, 14 PBA regional titles to his credit as well. Last one of those coming last year in the PBA 50 PBA Houston doubles at Copperfield Bowl. Of course, Copperfield Bowl home of that great striking against breast cancer mixed doubles tournament. And Manier, not scared of us at all. No, I think, Rick, since the guys have played where they've played, it actually opened up Rick's track a little bit, and his carry percentage could be quite high in this match, which wouldn't break his heart a bit. <laughs> well, Brian Voss, 51st again after the first round, makes the step ladder. That's amazing. 25 times on tour, one on his Hall of Fame career. He's a USBC Hall of Famer as well. And the 1988 PBA Player of the Year. You no. Know, oh, he wanted that bad, and it looked good. Ten pin. Yeah. I hope I got my story right. But you know, Brian came out of the the military mm-hmm. uh, onto the tour, and he bowled in the military. And if this, if I got the story right, um, 
you know, you used to, you had to have a 200 average to come out on tour. He didn't have a 200 average in the military, but since they bowled on such tough conditions, he averaged like 196 or so. Uh, they wrote a letter explaining what he bowled on it, what is it, the, you know, the conditions sure. that, that the tour has, and they let him in, and obviously now we have the PBA Hall of Famer because 25 titles later. Yeah, so It's, it's a, not exactly easy to get your wood lanes resurfaced in the middle of nowhere, Alaska, while you're serving there. Right. Yeah, <laughs> ex- exactly. And, you know, and he bowled on, I mean, just junk that he bowled on, and so... That makes you learn different tricks as far as, you know, either hooking the ball or throwing yeah. it straight or whatever you have to do to strike. And uh, that knowledge when he came out on tour definitely helped because he's seen the patterns a lot different than guys that, you know, get to bowl on oil all the time. And that one, wow. And so the lanes are changing yeah. right before our eyes. The 3610, which is just the biggest Pain in the butt to pick up in the world, <laughs> and that's just the ball reading earlier. It hit, oh, it hit, that it read hit, way hit the, earlier. Cliff, yeah, yeah. It, you know, he might have been a little bit slower, but that ball started hooking right as it before it was out of the pattern. Uh, that's no good. Well, they do call Fort Wayne the Summit City, and that ball looked like it rolled down from the summit to get through the three pin. No problem on the spare. Yeah, that's quite impressive. Backed it up through the. Oil to the three six ten. I think Brian's got <clears throat> a tiger on his hands right here with Maneer because that pattern opening up that track area becoming a little bit more friction sensitive. I'm just surprised that a player like Maneer who's a little more speed dominant, the rotation dominant, is using a, a polished ball on this pattern. I don't think it's polished. I okay. think it's it's lane shine, and he's throwing a total different. You know, he's throwing an asymmetrical ball too, but he's throwing. Whoa, we just seen that happen before. A solid eight, but he's throwing a pin up ball. So since he's straighter, like that, all of that energy is basically getting saved to right at the end, fifty three feet right before it hits the pins, and it's making that move where Brian is throwing a pin down ball, which we've talked about it before a hundred times. It changes the differential, so. It makes that ball a little bit smoother, and for Brian with his hand, maybe hooking a little bit earlier too. Here, 67 years young, <laughs> and waves it away like a bad dream. Well, pocket solid eight, solid nines are something that out here are basically nightmares because they always pop up right when you need something the most. <clears throat> Maneer didn't bowl a lot of th- times on the tour back in the day, but back in 1984, finished third in the U.S. B.C. Masters. That's fantastic because yeah. that's when all the, the big heavy hitters were out there at that time. Bryant has definitely got his hands full with Rick. He's making it look pretty easy. Rick really smooth the line, dead solid, good leverage. You, you see, the as we get older, the leverage point at the foul line is way different. The, the knee bend isn't quite as steep. Body's a little more straight up and down. But at least they're not bending forward. Worst thing you can do is bend too far forward and lose all of your leverage. Normally your hand comes around the ball, you thumb down it, elbow goes out, and everything is bad. Boss looking to stay within 13, and he does. That ball is definitely starting to change directions on the back end. I don't know if that is such a good thing. He's moved in. He's like 12, 13 now, and that ball jumped pretty hard on that replay on the back end. So that's going to be something to contend with. And knowing Brian, he's going to try to change hand positions before he switches bowling balls. Well, I, I don't see him switching bowling balls. But with that, and I'm sure Mark is probably kind of paying a little bit of attention over there on the sidelines because that hook on the back end kind of walked right into his wheelhouse. So Brian digging the 11 devil out of that ring finger, making sure that thing's in there. You know, they say you're more up the back of the ball if you hit harder with your ring finger, more around the ball if you hit harder with your middle finger. 
Well, and that so, ball didn't change direction as much, so maybe that dug in ring finger had something to do with it. Uh, if, he, if he can come more up the back of the ball, we get more forward roll. If he ends up digging more with a ring, middle finger, you tend to come around the side of the ball more, which is unfortunately my problem sometimes, <laughs> most of the time. So we mentioned Maneer finishing third in the 1984 Masters. You know what the uh, big thing out of the 84 Masters was, don't you, Tom? No, but Ur you're going to tell me, right? Earl, Earl Anthony's last PBA Tour title was the 84 Masters. Really? Yes. I, so. You're just a wealth of knowledge. Well, and Google helps. <laughs> uh, uh, Rick uh, Maneer Googled a lot before this match. How do I strike against Brian Voss? Because he's doing it often now. Yeah, he, he's making it look pretty easy. Look at that loft. Those dots are seven feet out on the lane, and he is landing the ball on the dots. And that it, ball overall is maybe having seven boards of movement, eight tops. At tops. You know, he's, you look at that layout, he's got the pin above the ring finger, but he's got the mass pretty close to his thumb. So that, that ball is designed to actually go fairly long and have some kind of back end, and that's what it's doing. And I hope that's lane shine because otherwise you were right because mm -hmm. that looks like lane shine, but it, Otherwise, yeah. he polished the devil out of that thing. Looking for three in a row. There it is. That well, gets the lead out to 23. Well, he's got 14 regional titles. You know, and some people go, well, they're just regional titles. But, you you know, all the PBA players, no matter what their level status is, can bowl a regional. So we don't know who he beat in those regionals. I mean, he could have beat Walter Ray, could have beat Brian, you know. So he's not scared of winning. Obviously, he won the 2007 Senior U.S. Open. Yeah, I mean, if we look at a lot of Maneer's titles early on in his career, they were up in the Northwest region. So, you know, you got a career up in up in Washington or, or Oregon or Idaho, and you do what you can on the weekends, get out and bowl, and that's a lot of territory you got to cover out in that Northwest region. That's uh, those regionals there. You're probably driving 10 to 14 hours just to get to a tournament. That was a no doubter by Voss. Maybe. So we we're starting to have a slug match here. So Voss still down by 13. But on this right lane, th that ball's starting to change directions pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look quite so dramatic on the left lane, but on the right lane, down lane, just at, <laughs> literally looks at 58 feet. That ball's just jumping to the left. So we'll have to see how Voss keeps responding. And he's just tweaking that hand position ever so subtly from shot to shot. Well, yeah, you know. For most people, you're not even noticing that. It's hard, to, unless we get close-up of it all right. the time. From the back here, uh, the audience watching, they probably yeah. don't even notice that he's doing anything different. Yeah. So Voss looking for four in a row, seventh frame. Online. <laughs> yeah, totally different getting the ball into the lane. Voss is, you know, probably a foot and a half out. The ball going right down into the lane, and then Rick kind of giving it a, a toss out there out on the lane. So the way the ball's entering the lane is is huge because Voss is going to pick up a roll way sooner. Rick's trying to get his down the lane just so he can stay in that tube. Voss can max out at 266, and that might not be enough. If Benier keeps striking, there's 279 possible. They're out there, I know. This is kind of like what we saw in Jackson, where all of a sudden the scoring pace started picking up the farther we got in the step ladder, and there's the high hard one. I don't know if Benier meant to throw that high hard one like that, but it worked. Yeah, that was like right over ten. <laughs> that was ten down lane. Now that's pretty straight there. You hit ten at at fifteen feet, and you hit ten at forty feet. That's keeping it right on line. So chamois on the ball, get all that oil residue off from the last shot. And, and you need to because it picks up so much oil in that mid lane. I mean, that's really, if you don't get that oil off on a pattern like this, you are definitely going to see change in ball motion. I heard some guys say on a couple of times where they thought where they were flush pocket one shot, they get up the next time in that same lane, and all of a sudden threw it the exact same way, and it was 2 8 10. And he is <laughs> absolutely locked. Watch this extra look and watch like, that ball. It's going to deflect a bit when it gets to the pocket because watch that six pin kind of saw off into the 10 again. He's got such a, a really nice style because he's got that long follow through and he's upright at the line. Um, you can see why he's obviously accurate and his carry is good. He His execution at the line 
is pretty pristine. Not surprised if Voss is trying to keep the pace of this match at his preference. Slow it down a little bit, make Manier think about it between shots a little bit more. Well, you, you talk about that Norm Duke and Brian Voss are good friends, and I think they both have that same thing. They it can take you kind of out of your element, you know, s slow the pace down a little bit. Ooh, you mentioned that right lane picking up an increase. So <laughs> you, you just hear him say, I kind of knew that. That right lane, is, see how hard that jumped on the back end? He And he's seen that. I'm surprised. And maybe he did because we don't know where he's standing. He might have moved left, but if he did, it wasn't far enough. Once again, just because you move left on the front part of the lane doesn't mean you're not going to have increased friction on the back half. Going oh. for it. And overcuts it. It's hard enough to cut it over there to begin with, let alone cut it too thin. And in just two shots, the momentum of this match has changed entirely for Ryan Voss. Now he's in mandatory strike mode, maximum of 226 Probably 228 if he strikes out. If he strikes out. He didn't take any time on that one. Oh. What, <laughs> what took out the 10? Let's take Re an extra look at that. Replay on that one? <laughs> I think it may have actually been... It may have it, been the 4 pin or the 8 pin. pin. What? Coming back across. It, it, it went... Straight across. I'm going to Zapruder film that one tonight when I get home. Because <laughs> that was real unusual. That was, yeah, that was bizarre. One thing that's not bizarre is Rick Manier throwing strikes this match. Yeah, Rick's got his left foot. He's standing on 15, and he's playing 10. That's only five boards difference. Very straight to the line and very that close is. with the shoulders. I mean, and, they'll, they'll, and there's a reason for that, because he's striking. I mean, that's some old-school shoulder movement, which is very little right? for Muneer. That's, you know, watching the days of Hank Marino and Ned Daybowen right there. Yeah, that is, when you talk about down and in, if you're sliding on 15 and you're playing 10, you're definitely keeping your target in front of you. So it's going to be Muneer and Williams, a couple of Texans. Want to transplant the other lifelong? Well, I'm, I'm quite sure that they bowled against each other several times. Rick, Rick's just going through the motions now like uh, this is adult bumper bowling. I'm just going to throw the ball down there and it's going to strike. <laughs> and Voss having a little chat with Manier at the back of the ball return. This match is done. Voss is going to fast forward his way through and guess who gets practice again coming back on as tournament leader Mark Williams looking at a few shots. Tommy will be back to talk about What's going to happen in that championship match here at the PBA 60 Dick Weber Championship presented by DeHaze Insurance Group and 900 Global, your championship match coming up next. So there you see Brian Voss thanking the crowd here in Fort Wayne for their support. 228 for Voss, not enough as Rick Manier comes out 279. He absolutely just made it look like they were easy compared to you know everything else. He absolutely made it look effortless. No doubt. And, you know, and he kept Brian from winning back to back. Well, here's the thing now for Manier. He's playing that high hard one. Now you've got Mark Williams coming on, and when we look at Williams while he's practicing, he's got that shot where he's playing a little bit farther left and feeding it to that area where Muneer is at. How is that going to affect Muneer when he comes back on the lanes? 
Rick's not going to change anything. Okay. He's going to pick up his speed. He's going to stay in that zone. The thing that can happen is he can force Mark farther left. Okay. And if he can force Mark farther left, I don't think the carry is going to be quite as good, at least right now in this pattern. And I, obviously I can be wrong, but I think yeah. as Mark, as we see Mark practicing, I am pretty sure that you know he's a complete arrow left of Rick. Uh, I mean, obviously in practice the ball looks good. When the lights come on, things change. But all all these guys are doing to me is, is making Rick's shot maybe a, a little bit better. So I, I'm picking Rick. Okay. Yeah, it, it it's always seems to be the guy that's got the momentum, the guy that just shot the big game. He's the one that's got to be stopped. And Well, Strader's greater, you know, and Mark is obviously fantastic. He led this tournament of what he does. But th- that getting in and going around it, uh, just it's only going to take one or maybe two Aaron shots of not carrying, and uh, Rick's carry percentage right now is huge. So <laughs> yeah, no doubt well, two seventy nine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we'll let Williams finish his last couple of shots here, and Tom and I will be back with that championship match momentarily. Ah. Uh. I'm happy and sad at the same time, Tom, because I know it's going to be a really good championship match, and I'm happy for that. I'm sad this is our last PBA 50 or 60 event we're calling together in 2019. Yep, this uh, this is my last job. Uh, <laughs> I'll be done for this year, and hopefully we get to do it again next year. Yeah, I'll get to see everybody coming out in North Carolina starting next week on the Go Bowling PBA Tour, and a big break there for Williams starting this match. Well, he did decide to start the match, which was we talked about that in practice because it looked like he had a better look on the right lane because that lane's hooking on him a lot. And that's a pretty uh, healthy bowling ball he's using right there too, uh, isn't it? Yeah, I, uh, that is the supersonic, and that's the one that's it's symmetrical, which, you know, you got a guy throwing an asymmetrical ball, could be a little rollier. And a guy throwing a symmetrical ball that's going to give us a little bit more on the back end. And Rick's going to stay to the right. He's going to force Mark to try to loop the lane, I'm pretty sure. Now, is it just the amount of oil that's in the middle part of the pattern that's that's causing the problems right now for the, for Williams to try to get around? No, mm-hmm. I think okay. that's just Williams' his A game is trying to hook it a little bit. And if he can hook it, He's very good at it, and he's he repeats very well. I think the the straight part of his game is, could be his A minus B plus game. Okay, but if he can, because uh, everybody's got multiple things they can do out here. I just think if he, you know if you can get into your wheelhouse, what you kind of like to do, your confidence is you know better. Rick is in his wheelhouse and playing it straight up the lane and just keeping it firm. Mm-hmm. And you look at him hold the ball; his wrist is just dead frozen locked. And it just stays that way, and he just goes through the shot. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you see so many guys today, especially with the, the young guys <clears throat> excuse me, that are two-handed, mm-hmm. that are just revving the living daylights out of the ball. So, Manier just said, I think i got to move on this lane. i got to throw the ball from 9 to 8. He's going to put the one-board belly on it this time around. <laughs> <laughs> the one board belly. <clears throat> I swear to God, it sounds like a swallowed gravel. <laughs> You're back now. I'm back. Looking to get back into his striking shoes after having 11 strikes the last game as Rick Manier. Well, the grip pressure could probably change a little bit since he's bowling for a PBA title now. Sure. And he really doesn't bowl on the national tour that often. No, it's just the the PBA 60s, I mean, that kind of limits the field. I mean, f- for this year anyway, you don't have to bowl against Walter Ray. Next year, we do. Very true. So Rick starting out, not quite the carry that uh, he had last game, but nine spare, nine spare. He can still shoot 279. You just got to go off the sheet now. Yeah, you look at Meneer's record, and he usually only hits two or three senior events on the national tour every year. 
And this year, the only other event he hit, other than these events in Jackson and here in Fort Wayne, was the Senior U.S. Open, where Minier finished 80th in that event. Well, the Senior U.S. Open is brutal. Mm -hmm. I mean, that condition that we bowl on out there, that's a flat pattern. And the carry is tough to begin with. Unfortunately, uh, the approaches are a little sticky. Uh, we just, we we bowl the same place all the time. And that is just, it, it's a tough center. It, there, there's no gimmies there. So three career PBA, 50 titles for the Hall of Famer. Last one of those coming in the Senior U.S. Open in 2010. So both these guys have won the Senior U.S. Open before. They've been in these championship matches, but it's been a while for both of them on the national tour. Well, Mark, I mean, he owns a bowling center in Texas, and he doesn't get out all that much. He comes out for the majors, and and now the with the 60s, he, he, he's out here. I, did we just make a ball change? By George, we did. did. So not happy with the response. We went to an ball. asymmetrical ball. Maybe something's not going to flip as hard on him down lane. And he's got it wheeled outside. Wow. He went outside of Meniere's line. Yeah, he crossed over it twice. <laughs> <laughs> there and there. <laughs> so and, he that was more in his wheelhouse. He's moved left. He's sending it to the right, and he's good at what he does. And if he gets to do that, uh, Rick's going to have a handful. Yeah, and a majority of his practice balls were not with that ball Williams just switched to. No, he, uh, he was throwing, the, I think that was a supersonic he was throwing in practice the whole time. He had eight shots. So to keep the match even, Manier third frame, online. And lucky uh, that seven went. That ball just did not have the strong revs at the pocket like we've seen earlier. No, he's not throwing it like he threw it last game. And it it's just the pressure of wanting to win, you know. And you can't blame the guy for that. Everybody wants to win. He, he's trying to make perfect shots. But then sometimes you just don't need to be perfect. you got to get it off your hand. Grip pressure is your enemy out here. It can be your friend if you know how to control it. But if you don't, it is definitely your enemy because you just – Want to hang on to the ball and try to control it too much. So, Manier down by a stick in entering the fourth frame. The best thing you can do, I think, is just relax and let the ball do what it was doing. Easier said, said than, than done. done of yeah, course. well, you know, that's why I'm sitting back here. <laughs> See, you thought I was going to be in the show because I started out real good that set with a 300 279. I was hoping. But I just wanted to come back here, so I just kind of threw off so I could come back and do our last show together. <laughs> I'm going to go the, with that. How's pay, that. Was the paycheck back here bigger, I hope? <laughs> Rick Manier in three Halls of Fames in Texas, Summit County Sports Hall of Fame, Tri-County Hall of Fame, and the Houston Hall of Fame. Well, Texas is that big. You can have a lot of Hall of Fames in yeah. Texas. And I'm sure Mark Williams is well in numerous halls of fame, including the PBA. He was inducted in 1999. Do you remember Mark when he was on the tour and he had his afro? It looked totally different. There's, there's got to be a, a picture on Google in there somewhere. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I first met Mark Williams during a Brunswick ball test. In the in the late eighties, there it is. And Look at that! <laughs> Holy cow! Yeah, I don't know if there was an afro or a mullet. It's more what of is a that? mullet. Yeah, there's that's an afro mullet, isn't it? <laughs> I I think you're right on that one. <laughs> wow! We'll take a look at that after. <laughs> Mark Mark's doing what he in. does. He's crossing like seventeen, taking it out to seven. And that didn't turn out so good. Let's take an Seven extra ten. Look at that ball turning over late and it, just the deflection again. Well, yeah, it, it turned over and stopped. It didn't continue and no good. There's Mark Williams. 
<laughs> About 1992, I believe that may have been. I only got one on the spare. Well, picking up 710 is not the easiest thing in the world to do. Granted, it can be done. And now, control of the match back to Muneer. Well, if Muneer can obviously strike here and follow it up with a strike on lane 41, he is in control. He's just got to relax and let it go. He, he's still standing on 15, so I, I would have to assume that he hasn't changed much of anything, just trying to make better shots. And that ball rolls up. Early. We're seeing all kinds of different weird transition out there. Well, in the previous match, that lane cost Voss, right? It went through and left that big four split that he tried to pick up. And this ball, is just, there's just enough friction now. The ball's turning over, and he leaves a 4-9. And so, once again, it's not about how huge the angle is coming in. It's about what that ball and the strong roll is doing that last four or five feet before the pocket that caused that 4-9. Exactly. Not the easiest spare to pick up in the world, huh? but <laughs> he did. I thought that ball was not going to get over far enough. Take an extra look at this. I, I, look at the he, angle he played. He crossed like 10 and went across. It doesn't look like he's going to make it. The nine it. falls forward. He barely clipped the back side of that nine pin. I didn't, it still didn't look like it. Right. Even though it picked it up, it still didn't look like it was far enough no. over. <laughs> How do you barely yeah. hit that nine pin from behind to make it fall forward? That's an incredible spare there for Muneer, and that keeps him ahead in this match by three pins. Well, it only takes one, obviously, to win, right? If it's at the right time. And you see the big exhale. Right before he goes. Yep. Best shot of the game so far for him. And this is very typical of what I, I, I feel is pain because after I, my 279, that's all that happened. You kept hitting the pocket, but you couldn't knock 10 down. It was just spare after spare after spare, and I did the same thing. <laughs> just the glasses, shuck my head, <laughs> get up and rethrow. Yeah, and that's the thing right now from near. It's convert this spare. Don't let Williams take the lead while sitting on the bench. Well, something he's got to do either tweak, tweak his hand, uh, tweak his hand. That was good. Tweak his hand. You know, maybe tuck his pinky, uh, rotate his wrist a little bit. But he's got to get that ball now to change direction, and so that that. Six pin takes out the 10. So Williams down two in his half of the sixth frame. And what do you do this time if you're Williams to prevent the repeat of that 7 10? Well, it looks like this is the hooking lane, and he's standing on 35. That ball, <laughs> he's getting into his wheelhouse, you know. Now watch that ball. That was 17, 18, out to 8. It, it, it always seems like no matter where we stand, 7, 8, down lane. I, I don't care if you stand on 40. The ball gets to 7, 8. Goes to, if you're standing on 10, it goes to 7, 8. you got to get to 7, 8, down lane somehow. I'm drawing designs on this. It doesn't well, – I don't think you guys were getting a seven, seven or eight on the on the Dell Ballard pattern earlier this year, but <laughs> but I, I get exactly what you're saying. Where sometimes you get in these patterns, and next thing you know, it's uh, starting to look the same way. The last 15 feet down the lane, that was farther right down lane. Could have been a little bit slower, but that was not a good choice. That yeah. was. Inside That ball looks like it peeled up about three feet sooner than what it was doing yeah. at lane 42. Well, that's the same lane that he almost, what, he 710 on? Yep. Yeah, so uh, and that ball continued that time. Previous one didn't. So he, he tweaked something in the swing or in his wrist position to get the ball to definitely make that move on the back end. Oh, and that's what happens with the scenic Whoa. route. Oh, that was totally unexpected. Yeah. And he was so much in the puddle, he should have played that a little bit farther right if he was going to hook it across the lane. That ball just didn't see enough friction to take the four into the seven. That that was a costly mistake. Two opens in three frames for Williams, and now it's ball in hand for Muneer. Williams' best he can do now is 213.
Rick hopefully moved a little bit left on this. Oh, right back in Williams' court. And that five count is really painful right there. Especially on a spare. I mean, losing count like that. And obviously he didn't move left. You know, I would have thought he had made a bigger move off that 4-9. Got to get three out of this. I mean, it's possible to get four, but you got to make sure you get three at this point with your count. Yeah, he's only got a bowl on that right lane one more time, but still, I mean, and that's the the one he's got a bowl on is the foundation frame, and he only oh. gets one. So we go from a five count to a six count. We're handing pins away. So a five pin advantage. For Williams, three frames remaining, and I thought after last game, Tom, we were going to have a shootout. We were going to take another one of those matches. It's going to be two twenty to win. Well, obviously, I uh, <laughs> way missed my guess, yeah. uh, and I didn't think it was a guess that Rick was just you know this is kind of in his wheelhouse, and Mark would be out of his. But right now, neither one of them are in a wheelhouse. <laughs> is it just a transition they're creating for each other that's causing this problem? It's just, yeah, the the amount of surface that's went down the lane and the way the pattern is played different. Yeah, Rick has definitely lost all of his carry. He has none now. So he's only got, counting this frame, two, two more frames to figure out something. He's got the ninth frame on, on the lane. He's just 4-9 and big 5 on He's got to figure that out, and he's got to figure out how to strike in the 10th. And once again, Mark Williams alive in this match. Thing is, for Williams, he has to figure out lane 41 to have any chance of keeping pressure on Manier. Well, you know, Rick's having a problem on the right lane, and Mark's having problems on the left lane. <laughs> and they're both finishing on their best lanes, at least. They have that going for them at this moment. As... Williams will finish the 10th frame after Minear. Mark actually has his pinky finger. You know, this first guy we've seen on the show that actually has his pinky finger in the ball. Got a hole drilled for it. And another strike. The last three strikes on 42 have been interrupted by open frames in lane 41. And take an extra look. And that ball just set up perfectly flush. Ten straight back. Now, the key is here, the foundation frame, which you either pick up a lot of pins or you lose a lot of pins. And, and what do you do? You go pocket 7-10, you throw another shot, you go 4-7, and then miss it when you take the scenic route on the spare. Does he, does he move farther left and wheel it? No, he's okay. got to throw it better. Okay. Looks better from here, and the result's much better as well. And that's why you're a Hall of Famer. (laughs) You throw it good when you need it. See, that ball just set right up the pocket. The one didn't finish, didn't set up. The other one over-continued. That that was a great shot. (laughs) This lane and this shot is absolutely a must. This is the match right here. To have any chance with stepping up in the 10th frame, and there needs to strike on the shot. And a little noise from somewhere farther down the way. Can't blame Manier for stopping. And now a cell phone in the crowd. It's getting better. Yeah. John Weber forgot to tell people to turn off their cell phones this time. <laughs> that's has happened before in a match yes, cell phone. Last year. and It cost Bob Lern. Extreme. Did he move? We wonder. He did move left. He lofted farther, too. Oh. Three shots in a row. Fifth, seventh, and ninth frame. I mean, the that ball. right lane. He is, lofted that one 10 feet out time. Okay, hey, this is the part I guess I don't understand. Okay. His feet, he did move left with yeah. his feet. Yeah. Why wouldn't you throw it the same way? Why are you throwing it farther out? Because you move left to get the ball to go farther down the lane yeah. anyway because you want to pick up some more oil. Right. It's not like you needed to overthrow it to get it down there. That was 
that was costly. And that's going to be a one seventy-five match if, if he strikes out. That just brings Mark up. Count. Yeah. He's just got to show up on the right lane. How quickly the tide turns in these matches on the PBA 60 Tour. And, of course, they get easier to throw when they probably don't matter. Right. They always do. Just dead flush. That was a great shot. I'm sure he's probably going to throw two more just like it. (laughs) I guess stranger things have happened. Yeah, and but Mark I, could get up and, you know, oh. some goofy count. A five count for Mark. Uh, no, he's getting more than a five count, but he's definitely going to just need solid count on that first ball. 175 max. 213 max for Mark Williams. Yeah, Mark just needs eight on the first ball. Well, you know, Greek church, big four. Right. We've, we've seen all kinds of things happen so far in this match that we thought was going to be extremely high scoring. Yep. So eight on the first ball for Williams will be a winner. But we've seen Greek churches. Stranger things. And, of course, you can't play prevent on the shot for Williams. It's throw it like you need it. Well, you got, yeah. No time to get soft now. Well, Mark led the tournament, and I think he's going to finish eight With on the first. Enough to win. That's enough. Holy cow. Yeah, one, 170, 179. He only yep. <laughs> he got the eight he needed. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not a pretty way to win, but that's going to be a PBA 60 tell. You see the smile there from Mark Williams. Tom, thanks for sitting with us again I, this I, season. I've enjoyed it. I hope to get to do it again next year. I hope thanks so for too. Let me be a part of Flow Bowling. And let me get uh, an interview with our winner here, Mark Williams. Mark, great bowling all week long, but a little bit of a struggle here in this championship match. You managed to get things done. Uh, what was the key to that ball change in the third frame for you? Well, there was a time all week long where when my ball started hooking halfway down the lane, I would have to go to a, a ball with uh, – that was sanded more. I was using 500 grit, and I'd get inside of that spot because I didn't want to hit that spot and go high. I did that quite a bit the first day of qualifying. I hit, and uh, last two days, I figured out how to get around that. So that's what the change was for. And then up in the 10th frame, you kind of knew you needed eight to win, or you just planned it that way? How'd that work for you? I knew it. I knew I needed eight. <laughs> I was lucky to get it. <laughs> so first career PBA 60 title, and I'm sure we're going to see you back out here for a lot of PBA 50 and 60 events next year. I'll probably bowl about half like I did this year, but uh, it's a pleasure, you know, thanks to Dave Smalls. I mean, this guy's the, he's the senior tour. He he uh, hosts two, a third of our tournaments, and, you know, it's always great bowling at his centers, and uh, it's really nice to have had success at one. Anybody else you want to thank while you have the opportunity here? Oh, I definitely want to thank Storm, thank Rick Manier for dropping off 100 pins, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> definitely want to thank Storm for giving me the best equipment to bowl with, and thanks to Turbo Grips allows me to hang on to it pretty good, too. So uh, thanks to those guys, and thank you, Fort Wayne.